Hey everyone, welcome to the Sustainable Landscape Lecture, Chapter 16 in Landscape Management 1. Kind of a short lecture here, but let's go ahead and get started. As you are combining Chapters 11 and 16 this week uh, here in your uh, HOR 116 class. But introduction, landscape sustainability is practices that meet the needs of the present without compromising future generations' abilities to meet their needs. We're protecting our children. We're protecting the environment for them to be able to use next decades, you know, and their children after that, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren, we want them to be able to enjoy this great earth, and we have got to start protecting it now. And it all begins with design. It all then leads into sustainable construction and then the operation of the facility and then the maintenance of this facility. It's all combined into one. And then we've got these lead certifications that you're going to read about in your chapter. I mean, there's all kinds of ways that we can start protecting the environment, you know, solar panels. And then landscaping, guys, plays so much a part of a building uh, being LEED certified or being sustainable or even being a certified green building, uh, Energy Star building, we can help by doing uh, good landscape design and good plant choices for these properties. And so sustainability, the definition, it's, you know, it's social, it's economic, and it's an environment part of it. And so with environmental our natural resource use, environmental management, the pollution prevention of air, water, land, and waste. Social is a standard of living, the education, the community, and an equal opportunity. Can everybody benefit from it? And of course, everybody benefits for us being sustainable. Economic, it has to be profitable. Guys, we can't do it if we lose money on it. So having a profit, it's just like if your company is to sustain itself, it has to make a profit. It needs to have cost savings and allow economic growth and then have research and development from the profits made on this. And so then you can intertwine all these, you know, starting with environmental economic, energy efficiency, subsidies, incentives for use of natural resources. Social, environmental, environmental justice, nature resource stewardship, locally and globally. You've heard me say this many a times. We are stewards of the land being in the green industry. We must take care uh, of our environment, of the planet, everything. And then economic, social, business ethics. You know, we're going to have fair trade and workers' rights. We can't put them in danger uh, doing uh, anything uh, sustainable. I mean, we can't hurt our employees. Um, and so basically, we need to reduce landscape waste, you know, and a lot of it is biodegradable. We can take our tree chippings, our pruning uh, chippings, even our grass. I mean, we were sustainable a long time ago because we grew up on a farm and we had a landscape business. And so we bagged 90% of the grass that we cut. We did. And we had a way to bring it back to our property. We fed it to the Angus cattle that we had. So we mixed that grass into the pasture. I mean, the, the cows would see us pull into the shop and they would come running to the fence line because they knew we had that fresh ground up, chopped up grass that they loved. They would eat this grass. They would, you know, then poop immediately right behind it. We would take that manure waste and then we would mix it with our leaf that we had on uh, leaf removal sites. And so we would mix that and then we would come up with this great organic, I mean, perfect, just solid black gold dirt that people paid a big price for. So we were taking our yard waste and actually doing it. We need to reduce our energy consumption, reduce our carbon emissions. And I think we're doing pretty good as a society now. Everybody's a little more conscientious at it. And then we need to reduce chemical reduction. And, you know, with the integration of integrated pest management, if you all have taken HOR 164, we talk about, you know, using pesticide as a last choice. So, uh, we've, we've got to do this and we've got to, to get rid of that yard waste in a, in a economical way. And here I think is just a, a really good, um, you know, chart or 
graphic of of what we can do uh, to protect the environment. Have your septic tank pump and system inspected regularly. You know, direct your downspouts onto the lawns and away from paved surfaces or even collect them and use them for car washing. Plant grass or plants on the bare spots in your yard. Follow directions on fertilizer labels. Sweep off the driveway, sidewalks, and roads so that the chemicals won't go into the storm drain. Pick up after your pet. Don't let pet waste wash into storm drains. Never pour any kind of waste into the store drains. Take your car to a car wash or park it on the grass to wash it so that the cleaners don't run off into the storm drains. Compost yard waste, leaves, and grass. Don't dump them in the ditches or waterways. And then minimize pesticides. Learn about integrated pest management. Check your car for leaks and recycled used motor oil. Never pour it on the ground or into a storm drain. I mean, I, mean, I don't know. Growing up on a farm, this was just common sense for me. I don't, I don't understand why people would even pour oil down a drain or on top of the ground. Unbelievable. But, you know, this graphic shows people that may not know that that's what they're not supposed to do to help them realize that they are harming the environment. So our built environment, guys, it's everything around us. It's the physical building. It's the hardscapes, the transportation, the watersheds, natural or planted vegetation. It is the interaction with humans and local flora and fauna. It is us. It's everything that is around us. So just remember the built environment, and we need to protect everything about it. With the government proper uh, government projects and, and government initiatives. They've came up with the U S green building council. There is the sustainable sites initiative. And then there's the American society of landscape architects. And maybe some of you guys and gals are going to transfer to North Carolina, a and state university and study landscape architecture and become a full member of the American society of landscape architects. I am, I'm a full member of uh, this organization and they truly, truly educate landscape architects and the general public about, um, you know, green industry building, about uh, lead certification uh, for the landscape projects that are going on. So a really, really good organization to be a part of. And then here is this lead, Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design. Yeah, you can get your projects certified as silver, gold, and platinum, and then you can actually be a lead uh, design professional. You could actually put your name and then comma L-E-E-D. And then there's eight Pacific project types, new construction, existing buildings where you could renovate them, commercial interiors, the core and shell. Basically, that's a shopping center, and they're just waiting for somebody to come in and lease it and then do what they need to do for it. Homes, and then neighborhood development. That's where landscape architects would come into play. Uh, school design, and then retail centers. And so the changing landscape for the landscape manager, the following factors can influence the sustainability of a particular site and should be considered when planning and implementing landscape management plans, soil loss, water resource management. Are we having an issue with invasive plants? I mean, we are, I mean, we're seeing it uh, in a lot of places. And so study up guys, when you finish your degree, you're never going to be finished learning. You always want to keep learning. And so look at things like the American Society of Landscape Architects. Look at Planet, Professional Landscape um, uh, Network. It used to be the Associated Landscape Contractors of America, and they changed it to the Planet. And they have things such as Landscape Industry Certified Manager. These training programs help you understand more about how we can be green and how we can actually be those stewards of the land. Sustainability principles, meeting the needs of the present without jeopardizing the needs of the future. Site sustainability, best management practices all the way around. We have them for irrigation contractors. We have them for landscape contractors. You've got to take these practices into consideration when you're designing. Ecosystems, protect them. We can't destroy them. We can't alter hydrology. Everything has to stay uh, where uh, where the river flows is where the river's got to flow and the way drainage is affected. You know, our watersheds have to be protected. The nine principles of the sustainable site initiative, do no harm, be cautionary, be design sensitive, preserve, conserve, and regenerate, have long-term planning, evaluate after the project, 
the systems approach, collaborate and communicate. This are the nine principles of the sustainable site initiative. Sustainable landscape management practices, two things that the landscape managers face, keep the living part of the landscape healthy and aesthetically ple uh, appeasing uh, or appealing, sorry, and then maintain the non-living components in a reasonable state of repair. So you don't want to destroy the con uh, concrete with, you know, certain uh, salts in the winter to keep the ice off. You want to use eco or environmentally friendly um, uh, salt uh, or, or ice melt. Water management. Uh, guys, I do have to say this about irrigation, a correctly designed irrigation system. I mean, somebody that knows what they're doing uh, and true, beautiful turf grass will reduce more carbon emissions than we can put in the environment. I mean, grass has more um, surface area of any plant material out there. And so let's take a, a quarter acre home, a quarter acre lot. A family of four living there. If the grass is perfect, now I mean, I'm talking about a healthy stand of fescue, has more surface area than any weeds that are growing in the yard. And when you have a weedy yard, you're going to have a lot of bare spots in your yard, so you're reducing that surface area. But this, uh, there was a there was a university study a few years back that that family of four uh, cannot put more carbon emissions into the environment than what that turf grass could take out. So that turf grass is actually uh, a whole lot better uh, than most people think it is. And, you know, I am the turf teacher and I, I'm, I'm going to stand behind that. It, it is true. I mean, grass takes out carbon dioxide and turns it into oxygen and it just has more surface area than, than, than a lot of plants out there. Landscape irrigation system technology with the computerized controls that we have, we can pinpoint the exact amount of water at the exact point that it needs it. No water wasted. We can capture rainwater and irrigation and reuse it. So we're not using fresh water. We can recycle this water. We can, we can control our stormwater runoff. We can collect this stormwater runoff into large tanks underneath parking lots and then slowly reduce it or release it into our streams so we're not getting any erosion control or anything. And then maintaining the wetlands. We got to protect them and we got to stay out of them and let them just be. You know, Mother Nature put them there for a reason and we need to stay out of them for reasons. Sustainable root zone management, uh, rhizosphere and healthy soils, native landscape amended soils, nutrient management, controlled release fertilizers. You know, you don't want to release that nitrogen all out at once. You want to have a slow release. You can use alternative fertilizer sources. Mulches and compost helps with weeds. You don't have to spray as much. And then to recycle on site, have a place where you can dump your grass clippings or your pruning clippings and actually mulch it. Have mulch bins uh, or, you know, compost bins there on site. And that's actually quite attractive. I mean, people are tending, you know, they like running uh, to those things and they start studying it and then they bring it into their own uh, households. Criteria for plant selection, you've got to study that. Always use native plants, stay away from invasive plants. Uh, and, you know, you know, some plants are okay if they're adapted, but, you know, try to stick to the native plants uh, as much as possible. What are pests? Pest is anything that's there that we don't want. And a lot of this stuff, you know, can be a pest in one situation and not the other, especially vegetation like Bermuda grass. We all love sports, right? And we like golf, we like football, baseball, whatever it is that you like. 90% of the time they're playing on Bermuda grass and you love it because it's beautiful to watch it on TV. But if you have a fescue lawn, you don't want Bermuda grass as a weed in there. If you have a beautiful shrub bed, newly mulched, that Bermuda grass could creep up into it. It is a pest there, but not on the football field. But pests can be insects, nematodes, mites, uh, pathogens, uh, and the weeds. And so we got to look at IPM. What is integrated pest management? It is the prevention, the monitoring, and the treatment. And the key word here is monitoring. You're going to have to watch it. You're going to have to do site visits. You're going to have to do site visits. Concerns using IPM, people love hearing it. They're like, oh, you don't have to spray Roundup on my yard. It just depends. 
I mean, seriously, you know, there's only one way to get rid of weeds in turf grass, and that's using 2,4-D. I mean, using some type of broadleaf herbicide. The only way you can do it is is with that. You know, you got to raise your mower deck. You got to cut grass at four inches instead of two and a half inches, which a lot of people do around here. You know, the height of your grass will help reduce weeds, so less spray. So it's a lot to do with integrated pest management. With landscape equipment use, you know, try to reduce your emissions. You know, there's battery powered uh, weed eaters and blowers now. There's electric lawnmowers. There's all kinds of things that we can use to reduce our emissions and the sound and the sound and some of these battery powered equipment are just as efficient as gas powered. I mean, they really could. And that could be one of your niches. We talk about that in marketing and management class, you know, coming up with a niche, if you're using all electric, you know, equipment, that is pretty cool. That is pretty cool. And then avoid string trimmer damage uh, around your trees, you know, cutting up your tree uh, root flare and, and, and just nicking the, uh, the trees will, will definitely cause a lot of damage to your plant material. And so guys, like I know this was a short, short lecture. So chapter 16 at a professional landscape management, and I will see you in the next lecture.